with the Also Archives. Thank you all for tuning in again for another video. Today will be my video about my trip, my dive trip to the Red Sea, Egypt. And shout out to Two Worlds Divers in Boone, North Carolina, and the owner, Mitch Pardue, who was one of my uh, very good friends and uh, dive instructor. I've known him for about the past six years now, ever since going to college at Appalachian State University. So um, he was the one who planned this trip to the Red Sea. And I'm always grateful for Mitch for planning these trips and just giving me more opportunities to learn and grow as a diver. So thanks, Mitch. This was my first, first dive trip on a liveaboard. So for those who don't know, a liveaboard is a um, almost like a small yacht style slash dive boat where you have cabins. There's two people to a cabin, but it's, it's fully equipped with all the diving gear and things that you would need to not only live, but also dive all day long. This trip to Egypt was the farthest I had ever traveled in a single trip. And I was super, super excited to go and just be able to experience not only the diving, but also the culture and, you know, the food and just everything that the country had to offer. You must have them tied down so they can't see Hey, them. you guys! <laughs> I think in total I did about 20, 24-ish dives while I was on that trip. We were on the liveaboard for I think about six nights, six or seven nights, and then we spent two days in Cairo, I believe. It was either two or three days in Cairo, and we did the museum tours and the, the pyramid tours and all, all of those. The, um, you know, the main things that you would expect to see, the main attractions in Egypt. But as far as the diving goes, the dive I want to talk about today is the Pinnacle Dive. And this was my first ever Pinnacle Dive. For more information, a Pinnacle is a typically a tall, tall piece of coral or series of corals that have grown together and just over time, over decades and decades, they accumulate and can grow to enormous, enormous heights. So initially, as we prepare for this dive, our two dive masters gave us a dive briefing. They showed us what route we, we should take to go around the pinnacle, how deep it was, how long we're gonna stay underwater, you know, all the basics of the dive. So after that, we got our equipment on, we were ready to go, super excited. Me and my partner, we jumped in and we were following the dive master to lead us. And initially when we, we hopped in, I think we went down to about 70 or 80 feet depth and we just tracked along the sand. And there was nothing, not a lot of fish, no coral or anything, just kind of uh, bare sand and a couple of pieces of seaweed and you know little baby teeny tiny fish and stuff but no. and then all of a sudden the reef or the sandbar literally just drops off a sheer just drop off and you look over the edge and there's literally nothing but dark blue water and um you could there's there was no seeing the bottom in sight at all and then just out as far as you could see out in front of you it was just nothing but clear water so we're still following the guides but at this point in my mind i was starting to get a little anxious a little nervous because we were swimming away from the sand which to me is like swimming away from safety we're still swimming we're still swimming i'm looking to my right to my left i don't see anything and I'm just starting, you know, you just start to feel nervous, nervous, nervous. And we're swimming out for maybe at least three to four minutes, just out into clear blue water. And all of a sudden, out in front of you, you see a, a tall, skinny piece of coral just sticking up out of the deep blue. And as we got closer to it, I was like, that must be the pinnacle that we were looking for. So we're right out to it, we get up to it, and I would say it's maybe about, about um, I don't know, maybe six or seven feet wide, 
and then it just when you look down it just drops just drops down deep into the into the ocean there's no bottom no sand in sight there's nothing else around us but this tall pinnacle of coral so we're hanging out we're maybe about 100 feet deep at this point and we're hanging out and one of their strict instructions was to stay up at, at about 100 feet they did not want us, our dive masters did not want us to drop down to 120, you know, 125, which of course is pushing the recreational limit. And so of course we had a couple of daredevils on our, um, in our dive crew and they were just hovering down at like 125, 115, 120, 125. They were looking at a lionfish or something that was down in one of the crevices of the pinnacle within the coral. And our, our dive master saw them and started banging his tank. So for those who don't know, there's a rubber band attached to a hard ball that is wrapped around the metal tank. So when the dive master wants to get your attention, they'll pull the ball in their tank and it makes a tap, a loud tapping sound that echoes through the water. So you can, you know, so you can, um, the dive master can get your attention. So he's just banging, banging, bang, 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 just just banging his tank to try to get their attention and get them to come back up in the water because they were getting too deep. Um, and I guess it didn't, they didn't come up as quick as he wanted them to. And he had to actually go down and kind of like pull them up. And then right after that happened, we had to turn around and, and started to head back. Um, to the little sandbar to make it back up for our ascent to the boat. So most likely we probably couldn't have stayed out there much, much longer anyway because we were already at like 100, 110 feet. And um, I guess the main concern was just making sure that we were all together, making sure we were all safe. So I guess that was the best option is to, to, to have us turn around and go back a little early. But on the way back, I was so, so, so happy when we finally reach sand and we're just out of the empty blue water. If I had to guess, I would say that the base of that pinnacle had to be at least 150 to 160 feet deep in the sand. And that's of course way past the recreational limit. So none of us were gonna push that at all. Um, but it was, it was an amazing, amazing dive. I had never seen anything like it before. So I was grateful to, you know, have the courage to go out there and be like, hey, like, let's go out there and see what's out there. Um, but we all, we all swam back, we made our ascent safely and got back on the boat and just discussed all that happened on that dive. I would absolutely do another pinnacle dive if the chance came up. I, I did enjoy the suspense of it and not really knowing what to expect when we actually got to the to the dive site. So that was the most exciting part of the dive for me. Um, but yeah, so that was my first pinnacle dive in Egypt. The next video I'm gonna do is gonna be about a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful wreck dive that we also did on that same Red Sea Egypt dive trip. But that deserves its own video. So thank you all for watching this one. The next one should be coming up shortly. And um, please, please, please subscribe to the Also Archives. Thank you again.